This is Will, and you're listening to The Law Schoolers. Okay, in this episode, we're going to be talking about a principle that was discussed in another episode. Uh, That episode was uh, Five Things I Wish I Knew as a Freshman. And in that episode, we talked about one of the most important things that you could do to prepare, and that is beginning with the end of mind. And I feel like that is such an important concept and principle that it should actually be discussed more fully. So, what is beginning with the end of mind? Well, beginning with the end of mind actually came from Seven Habits for Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey, and it's habit number two. So if you go on their website and look up what habit number two is, you'll find begin with the end of mind. And the quote from that is, habit two, begin with the end of mind, is based on imagination, the ability to envision your mind what you cannot present at present see with your eyes. It's based on the principle that all things are created twice. There's a mental first creation, and there's a physical second creation. The physical creation follows the mentals, just as building, just as a building follows the blueprint. So in other words, beginning with the end of mind is just simply visualizing your final goal and setting current plans to actually ensure that you'll reach that goal. So why is beginning with the end in mind so important? Well, Covey goes on to continue saying, If you don't make a conscious effort to visualize who you are and what you want in life, then you empower other people and circumstances to shape who to shape you and your life by default. It's about connecting again with your uniqueness and then defining the personal, moral, and ethical guidelines within which you can most happily express and fulfill yourself. So basically, in other words, beginning with the end of mind is so that we don't wander aimlessly and so that we actually take control of our own lives. And we don't let other people define who we are because, well, we are defining who we are. So how do you begin with the end of mind? Well, there's three steps that you can do to begin with the end of mind. The step one is to really work backwards. So think of yourself 10 years from now. Uh, you're looking for a career. You're working and you're trying to be successful so now you're going to want to ask yourself what legal field do i want to be in in those 10 years and what drives my reasons for wanting to be in this field these kind of questions will help you develop a goal and a personal statement and using that information will help you be targeted and directed towards that goal So step one is to imagine yourself 10 years from now and what success looks like for you. So that's the mental or the first creation. Step two, I would say before you like make your plans, is that you want to evaluate where you are at currently. So whether you just graduated from high school, you're in the middle of your undergrad, or if you're applying for law school. You want to look at your GPA, you want to look at your major, you want to look at your relationships with your professors, with your coworkers, and you want to use all this information for your benefit. And how do you use that information for your benefit? Well, that's step three. Step three is creating a bridge between step one and step two. So step one is where you want to be, step two is where you are currently at, and step three are all the plans that are in between. So for example, I want to go to law school and I want to... I do uh, constitutional law. One of my goals is to work as a clerk for a federal clerk. Well, some of the things that I need to do to work backwards is that I need to be kind of in this feeder court to get into a higher court. And then before going to a feeder court, I need to perform at the top of my class. And to perform at the top of my class, I need to make sure that uh, I am involved in lots of good organizations. And to do that... I need to make sure that I get into a good school. And to do that, I need to make sure that I have a high GPA and I have a high LSAT score. And to do that, I need to make sure that I study effectively during my undergrad. So to summarize all of this, you want to make sure that you set a goal, evaluate where you're at, and then create a list of obtainable steps that will help you reach your goal. So all of your dreams, all of your ambitions, whether legal or not, but since we're in pre-law, All of this is going to be legal, can be met if you do these three steps by beginning with the end of mind. It's one of the most important things you can do as you prepare for law school and as you prepare for life.
Thank you for listening to this episode of The Law Schoolers. Before I let you go, there are four things I want to say. The first thing is if you enjoyed these episodes and if you enjoyed the website, I would invite you to go and join Law Schoolers Pro. And you can do that by going to lawschoolers.com slash join. It's a way for you to support us, but there's also a lot of features there that I think you will enjoy. Second thing is that nearly all of our episodes are unedited. The only ones that aren't are pre-law materials, and the reason for that is so you can actually see the legal material in its raw form as I'm learning it as well. The third thing is that the information contained in these episodes are specifically only for educational purposes. They're not to be used as legal advice, and with that, the fourth thing is if it is used as legal advice, we are not liable. That is, law schoolers is not liable for any legal outcomes. Thank you again for enjoying the show. Have a good one.